Do you feel that it doesn't matter what you do? You just can't seem to heal. You're just not shifting. There's something in your life that you can't see. You know that it's there, but you can't put your finger on it. Join me today and find out five reasons why you are not healing. Hi everyone, Yvette Rose here, founder of Metaphysical Anatomy Healing Technique. And so here we also, you know, we teach people how to overcome, you know, adversities in life, you know, whether it's life challenges, blocks, feeling stuck, anxiety, depression, trauma. We teach people how to heal in a very gentle and graceful way. And you can find out so much more at YvetteRose.com. And guys, also here, remember to hit the subscription um, button here. Join my join the notifications bar. Stay up to date with the latest and greatest videos and also research and answering your questions. Also here, welcome to today because this is a very important topic and one that's very, very dear to my heart because this is something I can deeply, deeply relate to. Because at the end of the day, all that we want is a good quality of life. It's not that much to ask for. And yet sometimes we feel that what stands between the quality of life that we want is a bunch of emotions or maybe physical you know, challenges that we cannot understand or explain. And sometimes we can feel like the body is trying to tell us something, but we don't know what it is. Maybe you're doing everything right. Maybe your diet is correct. Maybe your lifestyle is right. Your relationships are good. Maybe, but you, you perceive everything to be great, but your body is not reflecting that. And here's what's happening. A big part of it is we experience emotional distress in all sorts of ways, right? So we have sadness, we have anxiety, we have addictions, we have unproductive obsessions, we have unwanted compulsions and repetitive self-sabotaging behaviors and physical ailments as well. Then, of course, we have the occasional boredom. We have various types of anger and also bleak and very agitated moods. So we can fluctuate quite a lot. We can sometimes experience a wide range of emotions during the day. But once viewed as a sign of weakness and emotional injuries are now also regarded by the medical society as only recently begun now to overcome the stigma and also now associated emotional trauma. This is a very important movement because at the end of the day, professionals now, regardless of the emotional illness as maybe they might, you know, label it as, you know, serious or as a serious medical problem that now requires the care and the attention of traditionally applied and physical injuries. More so over, emotional injuries can also affect the outcome of physical injuries and vice versa. Now, unfortunately, also while doctors are learning about the far reaching effect of emotional injuries, such as trauma, Lack of general awareness means that emotional trauma might actually last longer than the physical wounds from an accident that could have now healed by now. Now, in other words, people often take a long time to recover from emotional trauma because they often don't realize that they have them in the first place. And the reason for that is it depends on your coping mechanisms. It depends if you had the emotional support in the moment of the time of the trauma, or did you, meaning, for example, if you did, it would have helped you to become more resilient in the face of that traumatic event. Meaning if it did have to happen again, you would actually feel more confident. You would feel more comfortable because you were able to overcome it in the past, which now means that if it happens again, you would feel more confident to overcome it again. Now, when we also look here at trauma and also your coping mechanisms, let's say you diverted or you reverted to the numbness state, which is in what I call metaphysical anatomy technique. It's one of our seven instinctive responses. And numbness is one of them. It's a, it's a state that you almost step into without thinking about it, which is exactly what instinctive responses is as well. They happen first. And you automatically react to it without cognitively deciding or thinking, which instinctive response am I going to react to, right? And that's actually probably good. It's, for, it's, it's better that way because if we had to think, if there's a car coming really fast, oh, are we going to jump? Are we going to maybe run? What am I going to do? You don't have time to rationalize it. Something needs to happen. And normally you jump immediately, but you don't think about it. Now, in this case, what I'm trying to refer to is that Sometimes when something happens, when something does go wrong and there's a traumatic event, there's trauma. However, you might not realize how much it affected you because there's a part of you that disassociated. There is a part of you that became 
numb to it, which of course now will mean that the trauma is now hidden, it's held inside of the emotional body and also in the cellular memory of the body and cognitively deep down in the subconscious mind is an explicit memory, which means that that memory can now be triggered by your environment. You feel the discomfort of it biochemically because your body's reacting to it, but you cognitively cannot make the connection. Oh, that's what it is. Oh, that's what I need to heal. That is what I need to work on. So there's a misfire. There's a misfire in terms of understanding how the body is reacting. Now, when we also look at current neuroscience, because they suggest now also that more emotions and conflicts, right? The more emotions and conflicts that a person experiences, of course, the more anxiety they're going to feel. And that's also due part to the vagus nerves, one of the main emotional centers of the body, because it responds to emotions being triggered in the midbrain by sending signals to the heart and the lungs and the intestines as well. And the signals are ready, right? They're ready now for the body to take the appropriate and immediate action in the service of survival. So the reason why it feeds into the midbrain is because that's also where we hold our instinctive responses. That's a big part of our motor neuron skills that we also hold there, as well as the reptilian mind, as well as now the hippocampus, which is the big part of the emotional center within the brain as well. But when it comes to the specifically the vagus nerve, that is where the connection goes. So now what happens is that the body is ready to react to perceived danger before you're even aware that there is now also an emotion that's being triggered as well. And is the reason why emotions aren't under our conscious control. Now, the control that emotions play in creating both physical suffering, also healing, is becoming more popular. It's a massive, massive popular focus now in psychology. And there are also five things that I have actually learned from working with clients and working with students that sabotage emotional healings. And the reason why you're not healing. Number one, is denial. It is a coping mechanism that gives you time, of course, now to adjust to stressful situations. But like this healthy denial, but staying in denial can actually interfere with your ability now to really tackle the challenges that you're feeling. Because at the end of the day, what can now happen is that the more you stay in a state of denial, the more this denied state becomes your new reality. And the more you feel unable to face your real true reality, because the one of denial feels more comfortable and we get stuck in feeling comfortable. Another one is number two, staying stuck in the toxic relationships, not knowing and recognizing your worth. In this case here, what happens as well is that your barometer of what you feel that you're worthy of has dropped so low because of consistent bad treatment that you accepted. Because maybe you didn't have a higher reference point for how to allow yourself to be really, truly treated. That self-worth has not been nurtured in a healthy way. And so we stay in toxic relationships because we think and feel that we cannot have the love that we want because we haven't experienced that on a higher vibration. And so you stay stuck in this lower vibration because that becomes your new normal. Becomes your new normal. And now it also begs the question what is your definition of a relationship? What is your definition of love? Because that needs a drastic overhaul. And point three also is for why we don't heal being consumed by the past, right? So the next thing you know that many people do is to sabotage the emotional healing, is to stay stuck in the past. And you know the fight or flight theory, right? Because the brain is set up to be wired for danger. So anything dangerous, difficult, will usually now create a very strong memory. And if you catch yourself ruminating on painful, you know, past experiences, don't actually try to, you know, suppress that. Acknowledge that they are there and then move your attention more to a positive activity. Because what happens is that the reason why we get stuck in the past as well is we have 90,000 thoughts per day, conscious and subconscious. Now, 75,000 of those 90,000 thoughts are repeated the next day. So if you're focused on the past, if you're focused on negative emotions and thoughts and thought patterns, normally what happens, the predominant thoughts, like the dominant thoughts, they are going to be repeated the next day. And so now you can see how that cycle can be repeated and repeated and repeated and how you can now cognitively wire your mind to think negatively. So there's a cognitive cycle that also needs to break. And also number four here as to why you might not heal 
is not forgiving. Because another way that we will sabotage our emotional healing for ourselves is by not forgiving people involved in the feeling that you felt, you know, traumatized or hurt. But here's the key. Forgiving someone doesn't mean that you are forgiving them for what they've done. You are forgiving the fact that they didn't have a better solution or that they didn't have the capacity to behave in a way that you needed them to behave. Because at the end of the day, your emotions are valid. How you feel in that moment or felt in that moment is valid. You are allowed to feel the way that you do. However, in this context, forgiveness means to just understanding that person's absolute shortcomings, that maybe that person felt so powerless that they overcompensate and they acted and they behaved that in a way that was very hurtful and painful to you. And it's about recognizing someone else's weaknesses and forgiving them for that weakness. Not necessarily the action, but for the weakness. And number five, my biggest mistake, oh, I tried to heal on my own. That was the worst decision ever. I dragged out my healing journey like you wouldn't believe. Because we sabotage it because we feel maybe ashamed. Maybe there's religious reasons why we feel we're not allowed to ask for support. Maybe it's because we have a negative association with healing work. Because maybe in the past you did have a painful experience. And now you associate that painful experience with healing work. Which is not the case. Not all healing work is painful. Like, for example, metaphysical anatomy technique that I designed. It's a technique that's designed to help people to not have to talk about the past. You don't have to relive the past. You don't need to talk about um, or remember, you know, specific moments that happened in your life that caused you to feel certain ways. It's a very gentle healing technique that can actually can help people shift anything from just something like stress to deep rooted trauma and also ancestral trauma. Because this feeling of stubbornness of you trying to claim or reclaim your sense of identity, to reclaim your sense of foundation and support by yourself and not asking for support because sometimes we associate support with feeling weak. Sometimes we feel that if we ask for support, then we have to owe someone something. That can be eradicated immediately with just clear communication. Say what you need. Say how you need it and express a clear exchange for an energy exchange, if there is one. But be clear with your communication. That's all. Cut out the gray area. It's either this or that. Allow your life to really, truly become simple. Become an emotional essentialist. I love that because this is something that I apply in my life every day as well. If something doesn't work for me, if something doesn't feel good, I either deal with it or I eradicate it. But I do not allow it to control my quality of life because my future and what I want for my life is far too important. Far too important. So guys, there you have it. So remember to hit the subscription bar and the notification bar. Stay up to date with me. Find me at yvetterose.com. I have so many amazing three-hour healing workshops that I, you know, teach on Zoom live with me where you can also interact. And I normally hit different time zones as well so that I can make sure I reach everyone around the world. So go check it out. Find me there and learn how you can call your power back in your life as well. And guys, until next time, be the light that you are. Thank you for watching this video and I'm sure that you learned a lot. So guys, subscribe to my channel here and also hit the notifications bar and so that you can get notified every time when I upload a new video. So guys, also remember to share the video and also look out for courses that I have below in the description bar. And until next time, be the light that you are.